There seems to be something in the air out here that brings and keeps families together. Alice Giles is a world famous harpist and her husband a renowned Israeli pianist. They've settled in a property here in Yass. Along with Alice's mum, who's a leading sculptor, Rosemary Madigan. Everyone in my family played music at home. Um, and we had a very old grand piano and my favourite thing was to reach inside and uh, strum the strings. Thinking back to those early beginnings, it was just the sound of strings. There's something also very tactile about touching strings. The harp is a very um, immediate instrument. So however you touch it and however you hold yourself, whatever you do with your body comes out as a particular kind of color of sound. When I was studying in, in the States, I went into one of the international competitions in the world, which was the Israel uh, International Harp Contest, and I won that, and that was in, in 1982. I went back later and that's where I met my husband, um, who's a pianist, Hanan Wiesel, and um, then we decided to move together to Germany because it was kind of really, at that point, the hub of uh, a very lively musical life for young performers like us. It was a great time, but then our first daughter was born and we decided to move back to Australia. I never thought I would be able to have this kind of varied musical life and live in the country and do my teaching, which I love, and I, I teach two days at the ANU School of Music. Um, then I go overseas about twice a year. Do you want to show me what you yes, I to take to the to Chris the Gallery? Gallery? Yes. Come here, Alice. I'll show you what we've decided to send. So I thought I'd like to be a sculptor. I didn't know much about it. <laughs> but it's funny how those things happen. I like carving and um, more than modelling. I think I like to have something there and deal with it. <laughs> Cut it away. Mm. It does suggest to you the shape, you know, if it's a certain shape, well, it can't be this or that, you know, it has to be that. So, um, well, in the early days, the fashion was direct carving, so you didn't make a model, you didn't have a little sketch and blow it up, because that lost the, uh, um, the feeling, the spontaneity of it. That's why commissions are hard for me, because um, I can't decide. And just it's going to be that because the stone or the wood it leads me somewhere else. So it's a, it's a voyage of discovery all the time. Your father was the geologist and explorer Cecil Madigan. Mm. Tell me a little bit about him. Well, actually, you're sitting in a chair that was his chair in his study where he wrote a couple of books. <laughs> An illustrious chair. So I was brought up with hurly pictures of icebergs in the house and things like that. Um, a penguin, my father had a penguin in the study and a, and a seal skin mat, I suppose it was from down there. And he, but he did have a polar bear, which was not correct. <laughs> but that was good for children because that was on the floor and it had a big head, you know, and you could put your book so and you could lie and read these books. He only went down to the Antarctic with um, Mawson. He was 22, and, it, and they had an awful time, and at the end they all went out on, on uh, sledging journeys. And he, the diary for one of the sledging journeys, he kept falling in crevasses. He was always this hero in my imagination because I never met him. And... Um, as, a, as an explorer and a very strong personality. The uh, ANU uh, supported an application I made to the Australian Antarctic Division for a fellowship to travel to Antarctica because 
Um, there have been composers who've travelled uh, to Antarctica, um, but not so much performers. So there's always been a fascination for me with um, kind of making a connection somehow, and this will enable me to come some way to um, find out what he experienced there, get closer to it. Collage because it's been such rotten weather that I haven't been able to carve outside, and uh, just and I'm getting older, and uh, you know it's more physical. Um, but I've got such a lot of stone and timber, and I'm thinking oh, I must get onto this. You know, time is running out. I'm looking back, some things are not much good, and some things are reasonable and every now and then you do something you're really happy with. So here's the nearly completed picture of your little daughter and she's very proud of having a little spot here. One day we saw a little private ad saying stone cottages and uh, 45 acres of land and we came out here and saw these stone cottages that were no one had been living in for 50 years. No floorboards, no ceiling, everything falling down. And, uh, but we fell in love with the place. She found this place, uh, her place down the hill. It's a big block with a creek running 